Welcome back to Razorback Reels. I'm Drew Chamberlain. And I'm Ani Olivas. Thank you for joining us. To start off the show tonight, Drew and I have a real talk about the hottest headlines. Before we dive into our first story, we should put on our bedazzled cowboy boots because the queen bee is once again breaking records. Beyonce made history this week as she became the first black woman to top the Billboard country charts. Her single, Texas Hold'em, claimed the spot number one. Drew, do you think Beyonce will find success with this new sound? I mean, it's definitely experimental for such a R&B legend like Beyonce to take mm -hmm. a step into an entirely different genre of music. Yeah. But from the chop, uh, chart topping singles she's had so mm -hmm. far, I think it's safe to say that people are definitely interested and intrigued as to how this new sound is going to be coming from Beyonce. And yeah, so exactly. I'm, so I'm really excited to see mm -hmm. where Beyonce goes with her country music. Mm -hmm. And as we know, she's a Houston, Texas native. So mm -hmm. like obviously it's in her roots, it's in her blood. So, you know, I think that only great things. I'd love to hear a things. love to hear a country cover though of like one of her own songs. Like if it was like "Say My oh. Name" but like country style, I feel like that would mm -hmm. be love on top country uh, style. On, mm, that see n now we're talking. <laughs> the key changes. Okay. Anyway, sorry. All right. There's no denying Beyonce found success with her various documentaries over the years, but one star has a troubling connection to her upcoming flick. Former talk show host Wendy Williams has revealed a new health concern. The 59-year-old was diagnosed with a form of dementia that has diminished her cognitive abilities. This diagnosis was exposed during the filming of her upcoming Lifetime documentary series, Where Is Wendy Williams? Ani, do you think Lifetime should go ahead with the release now that Williams and her legal guardian have raised concerns about consent? It's like kind of a gray area because I know like in legal terms, it's just so hard to pinpoint when like the disease started afflicting her. Mm -hmm. And from personal experience, dementia is such an awful disease. It like can change your entire personality, you know? So it's just, uh, it's a really, really tough spot to be in. It's, it's a weird limbo thing, especially mm -hmm. with entertainment and things being released, especially with us not knowing the true scope of where she is within her diagnosis. And so mm -hmm. that'll be really interesting, especially as the case progresses to see if the lawsuit goes through, if it's mm -hmm. dropped and really just how it's the dementia is portrayed in the documentary. Exactly. So I feel yeah. like that'll be something that we'll have to wait and see on. But w hoping the best for Wendy Williams mm. and really hoping that, you know, all of her friends and family can make it through this tough time. Of course. While Wendy Williams has made her mark in talk show history, this movie star's response to another talk show, Ellen DeGeneres, made her internet famous back in 2019. Dakota Johnson is the star of Sony's newest So Bad It's Good blockbuster, Madam Web. Johnson stars alongside Sydney Sweeney and Adam Scott in this Spider-Man spinoff that is missing said web slinger. The movie has been trending for its ridiculous dialogue, bad CGI, and stilted performances. This movie exists in the Sonyverse alongside the other lackluster entries, Venom and Morbius. Drew, do you think Sony is ruining the Spider-Man brand with this string of bad movies? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I cannot tell you how badly Sony needs to give up the rights to Spider-Man and yeah. give it entirely to Marvel because they had a good thing going with the Marvel movies that were associated mm -hmm. with Sony. So you whatever, uh, the, the three Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Yeah. But apart from the Spider-Verse movies, mm -hmm. Everything else has been a complete and utter disaster. And so, I mean, mm -hmm. especially with Madam Web, I mean, if you've seen any of the TikToks or things on social media said about it, it it's no shock to me that with the continual garbage that's, yeah. that's been being put out, people are calling it the worst movie ever made. The oh. worst movie ever made. That's kind of a hard title to get. And so, yeah, no, yeah, like, especially. <laughs> In comparison, when they have the rights to the like the Tom Holland Spider movies, and it's all of these new movies are in comparison to those, it's just such a bad look. Mm -hmm. For our next segment of the night, we have winners and losers. Our in studios reporters will be breaking down who's on top and who's in their flop era each week. Razorback Reels reporter Alyssa Coleman is here with a weekly breakdown. Thanks, Ani. Hey Razorbacks and welcome to this week's edition of Winners and Losers. I'm pumped to dish out the celebrity victories and fails, so let's get into it. To kick off our episode, our first loser is Michaela Nogiara. Michaela is a TikTok sensation, garnering over 15 million followers on her platform for her beauty content. 
She is best known for reviewing products, makeup tutorials, and her incredibly thick Boston accent. While many love Michaela as an influencer, she's recently been in the hot seat for losing trust with her fans. Back in 2023, the makeup guru uploaded a branded collaboration with the iconic makeup brand L'Oreal. The video shows Michaela testing out a new mascara, and after a camera cut, fans noticed that Nagriara applied fake eyelashes. She was quick to deny this and controversially never addressed this topic. Just when the internet was starting to forget the mascara debacle, Michaela jumped back into the limelight when a small business owner, Matt Stevens, spoke out against her online. Stevens, founder of Illusion Bronze, came forward with text messages and email chains claiming that Michaela agreed to posting a review of his self-tanning product. Upon her agreement, Stevens says that he purchases, quote, $10,000 worth of product. Michaela never posted a product review for Illusion Bronze, but the business has blown up anyway. As a result of Steven's call-out video, fans are recalling previous dishonest collaborations, and she appears to be losing credibility. While it may not have been wise to purchase so much merchandise based on a verbal agreement, the beauty community seems to be in support of Illusion Bronze. Based on the backlash, I'd say that Michaela is the loser here. On a brighter note, let's talk about a winner. An iconic past Disney star, Bridget Memler, is all the buzz right now, and all for all the right reasons. Your favorite Good Luck Charlie star took to X this weekend to announce her startup as a CEO of Northwood Space. Mendler said, quote, we have our sights set on building a data highway between Earth and space, in her debut announcement. This is just one addition to Mendler's long list of outstanding achievements. She's a successful actress, musician, and MIT and Harvard grad, and as we just found out, a mom. Along with her announcement of her CEO status, Mendler tweeted again to share this photo of her four-year-old son with the world. She says that he was adopted in 2022 and that she is, quote, so lucky parenting is the biggest gift. While we first got to know Bridget on TV, acting in iconic Disney moments like Wizards of Waverly Place and Lemonade Mouth, we are all beyond excited to see where she goes next. And it looks like it's going to be space. Thanks for joining me on this week's edition of Winners and Losers. Don't forget to turn in next week to t catch the Celebrity Roundup. I'm Alyssa Coleman, sending it back to the anchors. Thanks, Alyssa, for that recap of the heroes and villains of the entertainment world this week. Drew, what do you think about Michaela? Insert I'm, last name here. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, mean, to, I think it's really funny to put to the fact that she was like, oh, test out this new product, and mm -hmm. then to jump cut to yeah. wearing fake eyelashes is probably the funniest, uh, funniest way that she could have done that. Mm -hmm. And to see that she's losing credibility in her fan base doesn't surprise me in the absolute slightest. Yeah. Um, but man, Bridget Midler. No. What? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that she's back in the spotlight because I remember, I don't remember how long ago it was, but whenever everyone found out that she was a PhD student, mm -hmm. that sent the internet spinning and I'm so happy for her. She is, has such a long, like her resume must be insane. <laughs> Crazy LinkedIn profile <laughs> that she's got. No, but, exactly. And if you think you're gonna beat SpaceX, well, <laughs> good luck, Charlie. <laughs> Stay tuned after the break for our next segment, Og Wild Harmonies. This episode, we're breaking down all of the most exciting world tours and which artists will be stopping by Northwest Arkansas this year. We hope you're still tuned in because our next segment, Hogwild Harmonies, covers all things music. From artists to albums, our in-studio reporters are here to break down the greatest hits. 2024 is already looking to be an excellent year for live music, as many artists are kicking off highly anticipated tours. Here, live in studio to tell you about some events you can look forward to this year is Gigi Kramer. Thanks, anchors. While we're only a few months into 2024, and the music scene has already been quite busy. As a huge concert buff myself, I wanna share my love of live music with all of you and help you find your perfect concert this year. Olivia Rodrigo's Guts Tour began on February 23rd and will hit 57 stops around North America and Europe. The tour, visuals, and costumes, and Olivia's stage presence have all caught fans' attention since the last time she was on tour was at the very beginning of her career. So it's been very fun to see her evolve as an artist. She has surprised fans with her costumes and song choices as she chose to add Obsessed, one of her vinyl exclusive bonus tracks to the set list. If you want a loud, high energy show where you can scream and dance, this is definitely the show for you. 
While I won't be making it to Olivia's concert this year, I will be seeing indie artist Mitski this March. Her tour began January 26th and will run through the end of September. It includes venues across North America and Europe and festivals like Primavera Sound. Her openers have helped draw a lot of attention. She has artists like Arlo Parks, Ethel Kane, Lamp, and Leve giving her support across her different dates. If you want a more intimate show with artistic choreography, this is the concert for you. But okay, maybe you're not an indie rock fan. How about a similarly intimate sh show of another genre? If you're into folk music, you're in luck. Noah Kahan is back on tour with his We'll All Be Here Forever tour. Noah had a very successful tour run in 2022 and 2023, and his 2024 run will no doubt just be as just as well received. If you're looking for some entertainment in NWA, the AMP season is packed with stores, stars. 24 includes Hozier, Greta Van Fleet, Niall Horan, Sarah McLaughlin, and Tate McRae. The Momentary also has quite a few concerts coming up. The Dip, John Batiste, Chicano Batman, and John Legend will all be performing there this spring. No matter if you stay right here or travel, there's so much music to be found. Get out there and experience it live. There's really nothing that beats a night of good music with your good friends. That's all the time I have for today. I'll see you all next week for my encore. <laughs> for Razorback Reels, I'm Gigi Kramer. Back to you, anchors. Thanks, Gigi, for keeping us up to date on all the tours that are breaking our bank accounts. Now, Ani, what tours or shows are you looking forward to or that you are dying to see? So, personally, I'm super excited for Niall Horan to come to the AMP. I already have tickets. Um, but I will say that the Momentary is a great venue, and I really, I really wish more artists would play there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so excited that John Legend is coming. I don't know if I'll see it, but honestly, it's worth it to go just for the venue itself because it has great acoustics. It's such an intimate feel. Um, it's honestly probably one of my favorite venues, but, you know, other than that, um, not really sure. What about you? Um, I guess in terms of shows that are coming to the AMP, funny enough, I've actually already seen uh, Hosier, Greta Van Fleet, and Niall Horan, uh, two of which are at the AMP. But um, I'm seeing Hosier again, and I'm super excited about it. I'm, I believe he's coming in April, and so I have tickets for that. I have seats, mm -hmm. and so that was a, a birthday gift to me, so I'm very excited to be seeing him once again. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, stick around after the break to catch an in-studio recap of the SAG Awards and find out who's taking the trophies in who's taking home the trophies in TV and film right now. Nothing feels better than winning a shiny trophy, and no industry does awards quite like the world of entertainment. Our awards analysis reporters are here to give us the scoop on the fashion, wins, and snubs of the biggest shows of the year. The Actors Union made history this past summer with their strike, and this past weekend they reached a milestone. Here to recap the 30th SAG Awards, we have Gracie Tui. The 30th annual SAG Awards took place this past weekend. The awards continue to honor outstanding performances, uniting Hollywood's finest in celebration of talent and craft. 13 awards in TV and film were presented this past Saturday. These awards follow the longest strike in the union's history, which lasted 118 days. The award show was live streamed on Netflix this year. The live stream had no ads and instead had interviews with the award winners, which viewers enjoyed to see. And the SAG Awards were full of exciting moments when the cast of The Devil Wears Prada, Breaking Bad, and Modern Family were reunited on the stage to present awards. The unexpected dynamic duo of Melissa McCarthy and Billie Eilish kept the crowd laughing when they took the stage to present the female actor in a comedy series award. Billie Eilish autographed Melissa's forehead as Melissa had a fangirl moment. Acceptance speeches went from sappy to happy as Divine Joy Randolph and Lily Gladstone had inspirational words and Pedro Pascal left the crowd laughing as he admitted to being a little drunk. Barbara Streisand was awarded the Life Achievement Award and was greeted with a standing ovation. She gave a heartfelt speech that left the crowd with no dry eyes. Among the night's big winners were TV shows The Bear and Beef and movies Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon. This does not come as a surprise as these winners have been dominating this award season. It wouldn't be an award show without the fashion. Stunning fashion looks were served by Greta Lee, Emma Stone, Jennifer Aniston, Carrie Mulligan, Selena Gomez, and many more. 
My favorite looks had a theme of classy and elegant and showcased fashion forward looks. As the curtains close on another spectacular SAG Awards ceremony, film fans look forward to the Oscars that will wrap up the award season in two weeks. For Razorback Reels, I'm Gracie. Back to you, anchors. Thanks, Gracie. You deserve an award of your own for that wonderful report. Now, I really personally like how all the people that she included were all the same color scheme. That was just very visually <laughs> satisfying to me. Um, but what do you think about the winners of the SAG Awards? I, I think, I feel like the SAG Awards are a very somewhat good prediction of who's going to win Oscars. I know, yeah. coincidentally, uh, Divine Joy Randolph and Lily Gladstone are who I have predicted to win mm -hmm. uh, both uh, Best Actress categories mm -hmm. at the Oscars. And so, kind of very excited to see if they won those. And I think Pedro Pascal is awarding of any screen time he can get. Yeah. And so, I'm incredibly happy that he got an award. Mm -hmm. How about you? Were there any people you think you got snubbed or people that you want to see won awards in the future? Um, well, I'm going to be completely honest. All I saw on social media, this was the most random thing, all I saw was that uh, Leighton Meester and Adam Brody made an appearance for the first time in a long time, and I love Gossip Girl, so that's what I, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Leighton Meester anytime. Um, but, you know, I, I find it's very interesting that you say, like, the Oscar predictions, because I know you're a huge Oscar buff. He hosts a party every single year. Um, he takes it very seriously. Very. So just know when the Oscar season comes around, he's got you covered. Absolutely. Well, check back after the break to catch our upcoming segment, Hill Highlights. If you're looking for a night out in Northwest Arkansas, we'll be covering all the coolest productions and performances happening in the area. Our Hill Highlights segment of the night focuses on all things happening around the Northwest Arkansas region. Though this area isn't a traditional hub for national entertainment, many local organizations have stepped up to create a vibrant entertainment scene. Right here on, camp, uh, right here on the U of A campus, Theater Department has a play for those who are missing spooky season. In their second show of the season, a charming devil arrives in a quiet village to bargain for the souls of its residents. Unexpected passions flare, alliances are formed, and the village is forever changed, which opened on February 23rd and runs until Sunday, March 3rd at the Global Campus Theater in downtown Fayetteville. Tickets are free and can be reserved on the theater department's website. The U of A Theater Department is extra busy this spring, this spring as the annual musical opens this Friday. The Prom tells the story of four eccentric Broadway stars in desperate need of a new stage. When they hear that trouble is brewing around a small town prom, they know that it's time to put a spotlight on the issue and on themselves. The town's parents want to keep the high school dance on the straight and narrow, but when one student just wants to bring her girlfriend to the prom, the entire town has a date with destiny. The musical will run for two weekends at the University Theater right across from the Union Bus Depot. Tickets are free and available for reservation on the theater department's website. If theater's not your thing, Fayetteville has just another show for you. Internet sensation Tanya Monager will be taking over JJ's Live in Fayetteville this week. Tana will be joined by fellow TikTok star Brooke Sheffield to, yeah, to host the live edition of their podcast, Cancelled. Brooke and Tana discuss internet drama, personal events, and various other hot topics on their show. Fans quickly sold out both shows scheduled in Fayetteville, but you can catch their normal episodes on YouTube. Tickets may be sold out for the Internet Star's Chit Chatty Show, but there's nothing like music in theater. Guitars tuned, mic checked, get ready to rock. Cambodian rock band debuts at Theater Square this weekend, backed by a live band. This darkly funny new play tells the story of a father who escaped a murderous regime returning home after 30 years in search of his wayward daughter. As the play jumps back in time, it's a rock epic meets thrilling mystery as both are forced to face the music of the past. Tickets are available now on Theater Squared, Squared's website and the show runs till March 24th. Looking ahead a bit, a family-friendly film transforms for the stage. Discover a whole new world at the Walton Arts Center with the Broadway hit Aladdin. Tickets are now available for the Northwest Arkansas stop of the Disney musical. The musical arrives on its magic carpet next month. The show will run from March 26th to the 31st. This production happening so close to campus is a wish come true. 
And that's a wrap on this episode of Razorback Reels. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Razorback underscore Reels. I'm Ani Olivas. And I'm Drew Chamberlain. Have a wonderful night.